Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing really well. Today's video is going to be an introductory tutorial to color clipping and how it relates to landscape photography and printing. So I want to start with a general definition of what clipping is. And you've probably heard clipping in relationships to highlights and shadows, but maybe not in relationship to color. So clipping to me is kind of the idea that we have this readable or interpretable range of information that our camera can record or our post-processing software can handle. And then outside that range, data isn't recorded, it can't be read. In other words, it's been clipped. We've clipped data outside that range that is not readable, it's not interpretable, it's not recordable. So when we're talking about shadows and highlights, that means that outside of this kind of range of recordable, readable information. On the highlight ends, we have areas of pure white. Our highlights have been clipped. There's no data that's readable or interpretable or been recorded in that section of our image. And on the shadow end, we have pure black. We've clipped our shadows. There's no information, no data in that section of the image. There's nothing there. That, that data is not readable. It's not recordable. It's not interpretable. We've clipped our highlights, clipped our shadows. So color clipping is fairly similar to shadow and highlight clipping in the way that we have this kind of range of readable information or readable data in our image. And outside of that, our colors have been clipped. Colors clip based on what color space we are in. So it's important if we're trying to understand color clipping, we need a basic, very general understanding of color spaces. Now, most of us are probably editing in Lightroom or Photoshop. I'm gonna be talking about Photoshop in this tutorial because that's where we're gonna identify where we've clipped our colors. There are kind of three main color spaces that we're gonna process our images in. And those are sRGB, Adobe RGB, and Profoto RGB. Now there are others, but these are the three I'm gonna talk about today. sRGB is the narrowest color gamut of the three spaces, meaning that we don't have great variation in our colors. On the other end of the spectrum, we have Profoto, which is an extremely wide color gamut. We have extreme variation in our colors, and we actually have synthetic colors that our eyes can't pick up and our monitors can't pick up either. Some people argue that Profoto is the best color space to process your images. And I think that's debatable, and I would argue that you shouldn't be processing your images in Profoto for a number of reasons, the main being color clipping. It's possible if we're processing in the Profoto color space that we can push our colors so far into those synthetic regions that we can't see it with our eyes, our monitors can't pick it up. And then when we go to print those images that have been processed in the Profoto space, we are guaranteed to clip those colors because the highest quality professional labs are gonna be printing Adobe RGB. The majority of photo labs or printers that you have at home are going to be printing sRGB. So we're going to clip enormous number of those colors. So I just want to run through a few examples here of what you should be doing, what not to do, and how we're going to identify clipping. All right, so this first image I have up here is an older image. Uh, it's of a waterfall in Western North Carolina. It's a really cool spot. It's a place I definitely want to go back because I do kind of like this composition. Uh, there might be a few things I would change and, and definitely how I captured the image. But right now I just want to talk about how I processed the image. So this image has been processed in the Pro Photo color space. Meaning there's a chance because I did push these colors pretty far. You know, we have a nice variation in our greens. Uh, some yellows up here at the top, and then some blues in the shadows and the water. When we're talking about these different color spaces, and there's a reason I picked this image, the sRGB color space has a very limited variation when it comes to greens and yellows. So that's really where we're going to see the difference between Adobe RGB and Profoto RGB and as compared to sRGB. So I would expect that because this was, edit, this was processed in Profoto RGB, if I were to go to print this in the sRGB color space, we would have clipped a lot of our colors. And I want to back up a, back up a second and explain what happens, what happens when we've clipped those colors, when we print. So I have some props here that I'm going to use really quick. Imagine this ball, this surface area, represents our Pro Photo RGB color space. And on the surface, we have a, the variation of colors, red, green, blue, magenta, and so on. And this other ball, they're both little exercise balls, represents the sRGB color space. The surface area on this ball 
is much smaller. And, but the surface area still represents the same, same thing. It's our variation in our colors in that color space. So when I go to print in sRGB, but I processed in Profoto RGB, I have to take this surface area and map it to this ball, meaning this, this surface area is much greater than this surface area. So in order to do that, for example, let's say five colors, five points on this surface area would need to be mapped to one point on this surface area. So that extreme variation I had in my colors is gonna be greatly diminished by the fact that I'm translating that variation into single colors in my sRGB space. Now that's a very simplified kind of way of thinking about it. But you can kind of imagine how clipped areas or areas outside of this space but operate in this color, in this Profoto space, all become kind of bland. They all look the same and we have this very boring, dull image. And that's one reason you'll see when you print, if you've clipped your colors, your prints never look as good as they do on the monitor. And that has to do a little bit with brightness and things like that. But you can still have very, very vibrant prints if you're careful to not clip your colors. So, make sure this don't fall off the table. All right, we'll go back to this image now. Now, like I said, this image here has been processed in the pro photo color space. So there's a chance that I've pushed these colors and the variation in these colors to a point where I've clipped them in the sRGB space. So let's say I wanna print this, like I said, I wanna print this image in the sRGB color space. So I wanna simulate what it'll look like in that space. So I'm gonna come up here to view, go to proof setup, and I'm gonna to go to custom. And here I'll have this device to simulate drop down, and I'll be able to choose what color space I wanna simulate. And if you look here, actually you can see under my document profile that I processed this in Profoto RGB. But if I come down here to the sRGB space, and I hit OK. All right, so we're now looking at my image in the sRGB color space. And you probably didn't notice much of a difference there. It may have changed slightly, if at all. But one thing we can do, and this is how we're going to identify color clipping in our images. We're going to come up here to view again, and we're going to hit gamut warning. And when I hit gamut warning, when I hit gamut warning, these kind of gray areas are going to pop up on my image. And everywhere that's gray means that I've clipped my colors. So when I go to print, we're going to come back to this ball, anal ball analogy really quick. When I go to print, anywhere that's gray means I'm operating outside of this space on this larger surface area or inside of it. Imagine it's kind of a, you know, a three-dimensional solid figure representing the colors. So it means I'm operating outside this space in this color space, but I need to map it back onto this smaller color space when I go to print. So everything's gonna look kind of washed out and boring and bland. So back to the image here, I'm gonna hit gamut warning. And you see all of this just kind of gray area representing my clipped colors. And that's a massive amount of color clipping. And I'm not gonna go over how we're gonna how we're going to fix color clipping in today's video. That's a more advanced thing. And I want to make this kind of a mini series. This is just kind of introductory tutorial to what color clipping is and how we're going to identify it in our images. But this is some, this, this is enough clipping that, that that would bother me to print this. And I would probably want to go back and adjust, adjust my processing or maybe just process this in an entirely different color space because that's a problem. And we're gonna need to go back in there and back off that color variation a little bit to the point where it's, where it's usable. Now I also wanna take a look at this. We'll come back, we'll turn both of these, turn this uh, gamut warning off. And we're gonna to go to proof setup. Now most of the time when I'm printing my images, the lab I'm using, I send them using the Adobe RGB color space which definitely is a wider gamut, and I believe it's gonna produce higher quality prints, higher quality images, because you have that greater color variation. So if I come up here to Adobe RGB, so again, I process this in Profoto, 
and I just had showed you how it would translate to an sRGB color space, how, many, how much of those colors that I clipped. And it was tremendous. And it was mostly, like I said, in that green yellow space where sRGB is very limited. So if I simulate this Adobe RGB, come up here again to my gamut warning, turn that on. And again, you see like that, that, that's actually really, really similar to sRGB in the way that we have clipped all those greens, not so much the yellows you can see over here, but we still clipped a lot of our greens. And that's, that's like I said, that's really problematic. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna turn that off and we're gonna look at a more recent image that I captured and processed. So this is actually a fairly recent image that I took and I just put it up on my website. It's called Desert Kingdom. It's part of my limited edition collection and it'll be printed using Lumachrome technology from Nevada Art Printers, which is just absolutely flawless. The best acrylic face mounts you can print today. So that being said, when I send this off, and I hope to do that soon, I'll be releasing this probably in the next few weeks, it'll be in the Adobe RGB color space. So I process this image knowing that the final output would be in the Adobe RGB color space. So if I come over here to proof setup custom and I come to that drop down, you can see the document profile here processed in Adobe RGB. So if I come to simulate it in Adobe RGB, which is a little redundant because it is Adobe RGB, and we go and view gamut warning, there will be no, there's no color clipping. I know that these colors, the color variation here is perfectly capable, it's perfectly within the range of the printer. No color clipping, we're gonna have max variation that I see here, and it's gonna look fantastic. Now if I come over here and I turn these two off again, and just for kicks, what if I wanted to print it in an sRGB space? I won't be, but let's just say I was. We'll hit OK, view gamut warning, and we see some areas of gray, especially on these brighter kind of yellowy orange highlight areas down here in the corner, and a little bit in the dark shadowy areas, probably a little bit of blue in there. Uh, that's where we're seeing our clipping. And it's not too bad. It might, it, it would probably be enough that I would worry about it. I would go back in there and touch up some of these areas just tone down those areas just so I can control the variation that's going to come out in the printer. But that just kind of shows you the difference in those color spaces, right? How much wider that pro photo space is compared to our Adobe RGB and then even smaller the sRGB space. So color clipping is really one of those things you need to be thinking about when you're when you're processing your images, you know, what color space am I processing in? And what's my final output, my final medium gonna be for displaying these images? So hopefully you found that useful. I know that was just kind of an introduction to color clipping and how we're gonna identify color clipping, but really that's the first step. Before we can really dive into how we're gonna handle it, we need to be able to identify it, and identifying it's half the battle. So in the next handful of weeks, I do plan on kind of furthering this mini series with possibly a series of series of methods that we can use to handle this clipping and kind of heal our images and, and work on those clipped colors. But I do think color clipping is kind of a topic that's really not talked about that much, but it's especially important if we're considering printing our images. Now, one thing we can do that I did talk about today, and it'll kind of help us avoid some of those, those techniques needed to fix our color, color clipping, and that is just operating in a color space that's gonna be your output color space. So when I was processing this image here, like I talked about before, this Desert Kingdom in image, I was processing in the Adobe RGB space. So I know that when I'm ready to output in the o Adobe RGB space, I'm not worried about my colors being clipped. So even if I do push those colors, push the variation, push the saturation a little bit, I know I'm not worried about color clipping because I'm already operating in that Adobe RGB space. And that's really what I was talking about at the start of the video, why I would debate anyone that says pro photo is the space you should be processing in because you do run the risk of clipping operating in that space. Anyways, I know that was a lot. Color spaces can be complicated. Color clipping can be a little bit complicated. Color is just one of those things that's so important when it comes to photography, but one of those topics that maybe we don't talk about enough. 
So anyways, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I'll talk to you all again soon. Bye.